Hello fellow planters and growers, Rachel here with Everyone Can Grow and today we're going to pop this little lemon button fern, which is a type of Boston fern, into this planter thingy that my sister's friend gave her to give to me. It had some fake plants in it, but we're going to put some real ones in it. It's copper and wicker and kind of uh, smushy and I like it, it's pretty. I cleaned it up in the bathroom because it was super dusty and gross. We're going to use this to keep the dirt everywhere in um, one place so we can just dump it all out. This is 10 mil, super thick, very good. Uh, should keep our floor, floor and carpet clean. This here is some dirt. This is sort of recycled dirt from several pots as well as my own potting mix, which you can find the mix for on my website. Uh, at least for now, I don't know if it's still, I think it's still up there. Yeah, it should be up there. Dirty. Oh, my hand. See, you're going to get dirty if you don't use gloves. There. Got it off. Good. This is a, a bag. It's not a trash bag. I got it from work. We use it for oily rags and stuff, but yeah, there you go. And there's the lemon button fern. So cute. It's smaller than a regular uh, Boston fern. Only gets a foot tall. Now, I love this tag. If I can get it to, yeah, okay. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, wait a minute. Ferns comes in assorted, sorted sizes and frond shapes. Most prefer humid conditions. Most. It's not even telling you what this fern is. Ferns? Excusez-moi? BlueMyQ.com? You gotta be kidding me. Come on, people. You know what this fern was and is. Jeez. Okay. All right. So let's get started. I guess in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Back. I got the uh, tarp spread out. We're on the tarp, and so that means no dirt and no carpets, which is a good thing because we don't need no seeds growing. We're not trying to grow. When I mean indoor gardening, I don't mean in the carpet. I'm getting my camera set up, and we'll get started. This is going to be really simple. We're just going to put the bag into the little wicker basket, and then we're going to put some dirt in it, and then we're going to put the plant in the dirt. You know, easy peasy lemon squeeze me. So this is going to take a minute because I'm not sure exactly how I want it to bunch up, but it's not so bad. Now, the nice thing about this little planter is it hangs on the wall and this bag is going to keep it from dripping anywhere, but it's also going to have plenty of dirt in it for that plant to expand and grow, uh, which is great. I know that the plant seems a little small, but I'd rather start with a smaller plant and uh, let it grow into its space rather than trying to squeeze a large plant into a small space just so it looks nice from the get-go. Although I think it's gonna, it looks nice anyway, and you'll see when I'm done what I'm talking about and what I mean. Uh, this dirt that I'm, soil I'm using, like I said, it's partially stuff from various plants that I've bought and repotted, and partly my mix, which is uh, two parts of coconut, tropical mix two cup, pot, cups, two, blech, okay, two parts coconut core, two parts uh, organic uh, compost. You want to use organic because it's not poop. It's just leaf litter and things like that. So you're not going to have that manure smell in your house. So if you're you doing indoor gardening, I highly suggest organic compost. And then you're going to use uh, one part of sand, one part of um, small bark nuggets. They're literally called bark nuggets. I didn't make up the name. I love it because they're called bark nuggets. But you want to make sure what you're getting is not going to be uh, dyed. So don't get beauty bark. Don't get anything that says color like brown or red because those are dyed. You can see, oh, just... Uh, Look at this. See, this is the easiest way. You just squeeze the plastic pot to get the plant out. And now I'm just trying to get some of this excess soil out so I can put my more nutritive soil that I make into this plant. I'm also checking to the roots and doing a good quality check. Everything looks good. Okay, back to my potting mix. So, oh gosh, it just won't stand up. Okay, stay. All right. Stay, stay. Okay, no, that's not gonna stay. I'm just trying to mix it in so that way it all gets mixed together. This is what I do, I recycle. And when you do your indoor garden, you can recycle too. But that's the basics. It's just coconut core, organic um, compost, bark nuggets, sand. You can use pumice as well if you can get your hands on it. I have no local places that sell pumice, so I will buy it one eighth inch 
diet one eighth inch pumice off of the internet. I can buy them in 25 pound bags, but they're very expensive. And um, I've noticed that general sand, like general purpose sand works really well. You don't want play sand. Play sand is too fine. You want a thicker, like a, a, a bigger chunks of sand. The play sand is almost too dusty, like it's closer to a clay. Just so you know, based on soil size, you have uh, rocks, pebbles, right? You know, where they're actual pebbles. And then you've got sand, which is coarse. And then you've got clay, which is really fine and you can, and it holds itself together. And then you've got silt, which is the finest of everything. When you get to clay and silt, you're not going to get drainage. You're not going to get oxygen. You do not want that kind of, end up with that type of texture in your soil. Look at this. I thought that this was separated, but it's not. It's actually just kind of coming off the roots of the plant and I'm not going to disturb it because if it wants to make a baby, then let it make a baby. But that's uh, how that all works. And when you're looking at soil depth, like how deep do I want to plant this? You just want to do it at the top of the roots. You know, like where the soil was before is great. You, you can see where the plant transitions from stem to root, which is where I had my finger and I was lining it up. It's not so bad. Uh, very easy to think about and look at. Unless you're doing something that's uh, bare root and I can... It's, that's actually not that hard either. If you look really closely, you'll notice there's always a little bit of a thickness difference between the root and the stem where it transitions, and that's good. That's all you need. Uh, you don't want to bury any nodes when you're doing bare root stuff. You can see that I'm trying to make sure I'm getting the proper depth here. I don't want to end up with it being too high or too low in the pot. I'm also compacting the soil slightly to ensure that uh, the, when I water it, I don't want the soil to sink like two inches because there were bubbles in the plastic that were kind of holding the soil out and then I got like everything kind of straightened out and now it's just sunk and I lost all my soil. I want to make sure I'm getting enough soil in this container to hold the plant in properly. Uh, I know that there's... Uh, you don't want like extremely compact soil like clay where it's super hard concrete, nothing like that. And that's not what I'm doing. Uh, I'm making sure that it's flat, that it's packed down, that there's no huge air bubbles uh, and that when I water it, it's going to be fine. It's not going anywhere. It's still going to compact a little more after I water it. It's totally natural to do that. The plant's roots are going to force their own holes through the soil anyway when they start uh, regrowing their microscopic hair roots which is where uh, all their water and nutrients get soaked into the hair roots first and then go into the main roots that we see uh, although not all hair roots are microscopic you can't actually see them they look like little fluffy white things uh, this one there was nothing to really show you and when you repot a plant you tend to break those extremely fragile roots so that's something to think about when you're potting up a plant. This is actually not going to go into the space I'm about to put it. It's going to go into my bedroom. and uh, But right now, for now, I'm just trying to get it all worked in, work it together, and get it put up and make it look nice in the living room until I can get everything else cleaned up off the floor, which I'm not going to add in this video. It's not doesn't seem necessary to me. Uh, and you can see that all my dirt stayed on the tarp very well, so I can just pick up the tarp, fold it like an envelope, uh, shake the soil off into the uh, contain my bucket, and then fall out clean. So, okay, here we go. I'm doing this. All right, let's get this onto the wall. Almost there. Big reveal. Oh, baby. Look at that cute little lemon button. Looking great. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.